Mike here. Day one, Sunday. Steven arrived yesterday to drop off the car. Right now, I'm having a little moment with the F-150 here. Unfortunately, guy, no longer gonna be the fastest 3.5. Tell the record for a long time, you've done a good job, I'm very proud of you. But this guy right here has plans to take it from you, and we're gonna help him. So I'm sorry, but you know, all good things must come to an end. And this Mustang here plans to take over the record from you with style. I'm looking forward to it. The plans for today are to dial in the car on pump fuel, 93, get it running, uh, see what kind of power it's making. Then we're gonna switch the fuels over to some MS-109, most likely. Start dialing in the nitrous. This thing is ready to rock. Still does have stock turbos, so there's gonna be a limiting factor on that point. Uh, we know already that they they choke up and they're not enough. So eventually, we'll most likely get some um, Cavelli turbos rocking on this thing. But for right now, it is what it is. We have three days to prepare for the race in Ohio. It's going to be tight. We have a lot of work to do, but we're going to get started today, and we're going to make this thing rock. I'm looking forward to it. Well. I've owned seven F-150s and each one of those had a 5.4 liter and I decided to take a chance and I bought an EcoBoost F-150 and I just loved it. It was before they decided to put it in a Raptor, it was before the GT and uh, the first week I bought it I put a 5,000 pound trailer behind it and towed it a thousand miles and it just rocked. I was impressed, it barely downshifted, it had more torque, more power than my 5.4 liters and uh, so that got me really interested in the platform. After that, uh, I started looking around and thinking, what I, what could I do with uh, this motor? And you know, really to build a, a six-cylinder drag car, you know, the EcoBoost is the is the right step, and that's why I picked EcoBoost. Well, <clears throat> I bought the car over a year ago, and uh, it was a total loss. It was wrecked in the front and back, and I uh, figured if I was going to do some major surgery on a car, I might as well buy one that's already destroyed and start from there. And uh, I've so took about three days to put the engine in. It took about a year to get it to run. It was quite a, quite a process. We did it without the control pack. We used F-150 PCM. And, uh, you know, it, it fought us the whole way. My end goal is to have the fastest EcoBoost on the planet. That is the, uh, that's the end goal. You know, this car, I think, is capable of nines. If we push it, you know, maybe a couple of years down the road after a, a rebuild and some new turbos, maybe high eights. Um, I'd like to be the guy that, that breaks those marks for the first time uh, with, this, with this platform. When I found out about the EcoBoost battle, that's what, that was a real inspiration to, to kick this into gear. I mean, when I started building the car originally, I was going to make an autocross uh, road race car. And once I found out Roush Yates had built a thousand horsepower EcoBoost engine, and, and I found out about the EcoBoost battle, I said, well, this is the direction that I should take the car. You know, I really like drag racing. That's been my passion since uh, since day one. I thought the motor would make a better autocross car until I found out what it was capable of. And you know, those kind of numbers make a pretty badass drag car. It has changed. Like I said, you know, in, in the beginning, it was an autocross uh, design. You know, I was going with you know autocross type suspension, and and uh, and I had a manual transmission. I actually bought the car with a uh, 4.0 V6 automatic changed it out to the 3.5 EcoBoost with a manual transmission, put about 100 miles on it, decided I didn't like it, didn't like the manual with the EcoBoost, and uh, switched the car back to automatic. And uh, now now here it is today, which is you know, gonna be the best for drag racing. You know, Once it changed from uh, the autocross car, we no longer needed a manual transmission. So I had a tuner lined up uh, he had some things fall through, and he's, it's a guy that actually helped me get the car running. He uh, took off the pats and different things to, to get the car to start, which was a, a pretty good process, six months probably. 
he was going to tune the car. Uh, he wasn't able to at the last minute. And uh, so I frantically started looking uh, for tuners. I knew, I knew about MPT. I knew about the truck, the 12 second truck. You know, it's just a long way from my house. So I was, as you know, as time went on and got a little closer, it, it didn't matter where I had to take the car, you know, and I knew that I needed to take it to a professional. Some guys that really knew the, the platform would be able to tune all the things that have been added to the car. So it took me two and a half days to drive here. And, uh, and, and the, what, four or five days before that, frantically getting ready to uh, drop everything. And, and buy, I bought a trailer, <laughs> loaded it that afternoon and uh, hit the road. So yeah, it's been quite the adventure to get here. For over a year, I've been researching everything that uh, Google has to offer about the EcoBoost engine. And MPT comes up over and over and over again for tuning and parts and, and different things. But the truck, you know, there's a video online of this truck doing a burnout with the nitrous install. And, uh, I must have watched that 12 times. You know, I love, the, love that truck burning out and taking off. And, the knowledge here is so much greater uh, on the EcoBoost platform than it was with the other tuner that I was looking at. So this is, uh, I feel like if I would have taken it anywhere else, if they could have got these things figured out, it would have taken a lot more time.